Praise the Lord. I want you to continue on integrity and what I was teaching last week because it's an important character in our life. I was thinking about this, this character called integrity. This is more than a character, how it defines who you are. And I was thinking, what would I tell my younger self about this? What advice could I give the younger me? Be it at the time that I started ministry, be it any point in my life. If you look at it that way, you can go anywhere, but there's one thing that I have identified as a root what I would tell myself. That is to walk with my Lord. Walk uprightly with integrity. In Proverbs 2.7 We read last week that he stores up sound wisdom for the upright. That he's a shield to those who walk uprightly. So as I walk uprightly, the Lord becomes my shield and he protects me. And there are times when I, when I know I was not a Christian, but I know that the Lord has protected me and said, don't go there. That's not good for you. And while it was difficult and everything in me wanted to go there, I listened to that voice that said, don't go there. Now I understand it is the Lord. How do I understand that? It is according to the word of God. So I ended last week by saying, walk behind this shield of integrity. Don't be fake. Be real. You cannot be fake to the people around you and be real to God. You cannot do that. It's impossible. But here's the thing. In Proverbs 5.23, it says, He shall die for the lack of instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. If you don't walk with the Lord, that's what happens. If you don't have truth in your, in your being, it says, you will die for lack of instruction. Instruction, when the Lord tells you what to do and how he's a shield for you, so I would tell my younger self that God should find me unreproachable. How do I do that? Because these are questions I ask myself. It's good to say these things, but how do you do that? Well, in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So this scripture came to me when I asked how I would do that. And I meditated on this truth. And the Lord started showing me how to do it. First of all, it says, I am the way. Jesus is the way. That is the primary thing. As a, as a child, I should have understood that. Instead of trying all the religions and finally having to have Jesus find me in the muck that I was in and save me, maybe it would have been 
good for me to know who he is when I was six years old. But that's not how it happened. But do you understand? Jesus is the way. Then the truth. You could say a lot of things is truth. Even Pilate asked, what is truth? You can say the Bible is the truth. But how do you identify that truth in your life? There is one thing. Because out of your heart, your mouth speaks, yes? There's one thing that is core that the Lord told me you should possess about everything else. And that is the fear of the Lord because it leads to truth and wisdom and understanding. If you fear the Lord, then you will do right by Him. If you fear to be in His wrong standing or wrong side, you will do what is needed. Do you understand? Fear of the Lord. If you don't have the fear of the Lord, you will do all kind of stupid things and find excuses that, are, that sound valid. How do I know this? I've done it myself and I've seen and heard people as a minister speak and wash away their own sins without the blood of Jesus by making excuses for that. They're not washed away, they just... I don't know, they're living in a fantasy land. You can't do that. Come clean before the Lord and the Lord will wash away that sin. Only He can do that. Only the blood of Jesus can do that. And that is the fear of the Lord. And then He says, I am the life. So overarching premises of my life is a character that I want of integrity. And that is the godly character. That my godly character directs my life. That, would, that is what I would tell my younger person. Because that would save me from a lot of trouble. And if I was somehow miraculously transported to my younger self, I would make a better effort to keep away from questionable characters. I know that my friends meant well, but they were wrong biblically. And I would have to ask the Lord for the strength to keep away from them and there were some questionable deals that maybe I've taken. I remember when it came to studio and the work that was there, I was like, at that time I just started and somebody from the U.S. said they wanted to work for, for you know, do some recording. And I said, yes, yes. And later I found out that this guy didn't know what he was talking about. And then it happened again. And the second time I gave in. And because I gave in, I had to shut that studio down. So I would make better effort to keep away from questionable characters. And I'll keep truth even when it hurts. And this... I know I had it somehow within me, even then, that no matter what happened, I would keep the truth. I remember one of my father's friends was a captain of a ship. So he invited me and basically his nephew to a ship that was docked in Cochin. It was a foreign ship. So I was, what, six or seven at that time. And so he was a captain, and so he was friends with the captain of that ship. 
and so we got in and we went to his cabin and the captain of that ship asked both of us me and uh, that his nephew whether we wanted coke a foreign coke at that time when talking 70s was like wow you know so he said if whatever you don't want you just throw it out into the water because we were going to the balcony so i remember okay whatever i don't want i throw it out but i'm not going to throw out coke especially we you know i want more yeah i don't want to throw but what happened is we finished our portions we were standing in the balcony and this person is this nephew was at least 5 or 6 years elder to me he said the captain said throw the balance out so he also meant throw the glass into the water i said no that could not be true he said no that's what the captain said so he threw his glass into the water so then he said throw your glass into the water i said okay so i threw the glass into the water so we came back in and that captain asked okay how was the coke and i said it was good so he said where are the glasses and i said well you know we threw it overboard so he was just shocked and even my father's friend was shocked and i was like i didn't know what to say so they all looked at him because he was elder and he said i said to throw the what a glass into the water i'm like i could have said no he said that not me but i just kept quiet i remember that because if i said that he would be blamed for that so i said okay let him say what he has to say there are many instances in my life where i said okay fine but my father's friend said to him you are the elder one what made you make that decision i felt he knew the truth but he didn't want to expose his own nephew yeah? but do you understand yes so keep the truth even when it hurts and the other thing that i would tell my younger self is to not to blow your own trumpet not to exalt yourself and i did that 90% of the time but 10% of the time i have you know i said okay this is not good but then I, the other side of that is not even revealing who you are to to those that matter my pastor once told me nobody knows who you are and what you capable of because you just keep quiet and that is what God has not called you for to keep quiet and another pastor said because I was just manning the mixer at that time he came over he was a prophet and he said the Lord has not called you to sit here and be like a dove me quiet and at that time I was running away from my calling so I would tell my younger self not to blow my own trumpet exaltation after all comes from the lord and here's the thing that i would tell my younger self the key of that that it is more blessed to give than to receive there are many things that my father has bought for me that have gone to waste because i kept on wanting new 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 things and nothing wrong with maybe wanting new things but here's what i could have done the things that i don't need i could have given away it's more blessed to give than to receive see when the lord call, call me i did not feel that i had enough compassion to lead god's people then i realized that it was my passion to help people in other words 
There are two things. One is if I look to myself, I would fail. But I had to look to the Lord to bring out what he had put in me. Make those ashes beautiful again. That it was my passion to add to a life. It would make me happy if that person was happy. It was my passion to connect with the Lord, to understand the things when I read, to have deep revelation from Him. And He's making all that happen because it was my passion also to make videos. It was also my passion to explain stuff, to teach to make to work with music and audio and all that he's doing in his calling in what I'm doing right now and I haven't realized that so I was telling myself that I would tell my younger self about God and God said do you really know what you're blessed with and that's when he was started showing revealing these things And what about now and the future? I have faith because he is the author of our faith, Jesus Christ. Because I have seen God do mighty things in my life that he will continue turning ashes to dreams. What was ashes? What was thrown away? He will make that into reality. He will take my weakness and make it my strength because of who he is. He will restore the years because of my waywardness. As I walk with the Lord, I know that he will help me keep my integrity even if I stumble and fall occasionally. Why I'm saying that is that this should be a real factor in your life, this integrity. God will help me achieve impossibility even with my momentary lapse of faith. Sometimes I, I question, where is God in this? Even with that, He will bring to completion. He will make me whole and complete and continue to bless me. Do you believe that? Because in Psalm 25:14, says the secret of the Lord is with those who fear Him, and He will show them His covenant. See, I'm talking about all this because I have a relationship with God. He's my friend, and it. In some circles, it's blasphemy to say that. But you have to understand what God means when he's talking about friendship. Both Moses and Abraham were, were referred to as God's friends. You find that in Exodus, in Isaiah, in James, that they were friends of God. And David and Jonathan were friends. But here's what you need to understand about their friendship. When you go to 1 Samuel 18.3, it says, Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. Made a covenant, an agreement. Do you have an agreement with the Lord? Job says, I have an agreement with my eyes that I will not look at a young woman. What he means is I will not look lustfully. You can't see the covenant he's made with his eyes. Do you have that covenant in agreement with God? Same thing in 1 Samuel 26. 
16, it talks about the covenant that Jonathan made with the house of David. A covenant friendship is a friendship in which you're binding yourself to God as friends in the eyes of God. This is important because then this talks about accountability to God. God holds you accountable and you are his friend as he is your friend. Do you understand? In the New Testament, John 15, verse 15, I believe, says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all the things that I have heard from you, my father, from my father I have made known to you. No longer do I call you servants, but I have called you friends. This is a covenant. If this truth is boring to you, if this truth is not changing you, or if it's making you sleep, you got to ask yourself, is God real to you? Or do we just have a form of religion without the power? Because every day I pray and I ask the Lord for humility, for the fear of the Lord, for holiness, for uprightness, for integrity. Because Daniel, in the book of Daniel, you find the writing on the wall says you've been found wanting. And before that you find it talks about many, many tekel parson. What does many mean? God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. How can you finish something twice? Because he See, in the Bible, it talks in the New Testament, Jesus said about two sons. One said yes, one said no. The one that said no did it. But one that had said yes or said oh, just to please his father at that moment. Don't be fake. Because what is in you will come out. Even if you serve the Lord, Paul says in 2 Timothy 4.10 that Demas has forsaken me, having loved the world. If you love the world and you're afraid of hell, that's your problem. you got to love the Lord. He will save you from hell. In Job 31.6, it says, Let me be weighed in an even balance that God may know my integrity so what must we do for all this it must be real the disciple asked the Lord how they should pray before Jesus went to the cross before they were born again and after the cross we ask what we must do to change ourselves Remember I told you that the anointing just amplifies your character. We've got to change ourselves. How can we do that? First of all, Jesus said you must pay the price. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says, Do not be deceived. In other words, don't think you're too strong. You're strong enough to handle this. It says, bad company corrupts good morals. Remember? Questionable characters. Questionable characters. Don't think you're strong enough for that. They will erode away the things of God. That is why James 1, 21 says, and I've taught you before this, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. 
and it continues be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself so when you come and hear the word on sunday do it don't just hear have itching ears be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself so what do you do in philippians 2:15 says that you may may become blameless and harmless children of god without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world i explained all this yesterday in the gathering you can watch that video but blameless and harmless before god find yourself approved by god children of god what makes you the child of god led by the holy spirit without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation what is fault in the midst of the perverse and crooked generation doing what they do don't worship in the old testament their gods worship true god yes same thing what are the gods today in this pervert and crooked generation generation are you worshiping that without knowing are you spending more time with god or are you spending more time in facebook or instagram or you have nicknames for all that it says among whom you shine as lights in the world that means the world is in darkness you need to shine as lights and for that you need to have integrity remember integrity is not when people are watching us but what we do when we think no one will know job said i have made a covenant with my eyes and i end with this in psalm 25 21 it says let integrity and uprightness preserve me for i wait on thee that means sometimes things may not happen as you plan but don't listen to job's wise wife what did she say why don't you curse god and die hold on to integrity job's wife asked him why are you holding on to this integrity says what the let integrity and uprightness preserve me for i wait on thee don't lose that god has not forsaken you he seeks to bless you stay behind the shield amen do you understand that yes so if you have duplicity within you take it up to god if you find yourself in the wrong end of this but james says what draw near to god and he will draw near to you but it says continue to say cleanse your hands you sinners that means to repent throughout john the bible you hear in the new testament john the baptist said repent for the kingdom of god is at hand jesus said repent for the kingdom of god is at hand and here he says cleanse your hands you sinners so if you have sin just confess them come straight to the lord with it be right with him he'll forgive you forgive you and he's not out to get you and or condemn you amen do you understand that yes so walk with integrity trust in the lord he will see you through this amen god bless you <laughs>